opposition party ready to assist the government with national security. WPSS Dr. Rupert Rupnarine solely decided to stay on the job. GPSU wants public servants' minimum wage to be $131,000. News broadcasters credibility questioned during COI into alleged assassination plot. Farmer brutally chopped to death. Those were the top headlines for the week ending July 28. Welcome to MTV News Updates Weekend Review. I'm Sandy Ramutar. Good afternoon. Executive member of the Workings People Alliance, Dr. David Hines, says the party did not instruct Dr. Rupert Rupnarine to continue as a minister and a cabinet member. He affirms that that decision was solely made by Dr. Rupnarine. Find out more in this report. We defer to his judgment on his health. We don't want to make a judgment on his health. We defer. You are our representative. You are our first choice. You are not well. We leave it up to you to decide whether you are well enough to continue or not. Executive member of the Working People's Alliance, Dr. David Hines, says the party did not and will not decide for Dr. Rupert Rupnarine. He added that even though Dr. Rupnarine has a medical condition, only he is to decide his ability or inability to work. We have a lot of sick people in government. <laughs> Yeah, it's normal for people to make that determination and balance and say, you know, look, I don't feel I can continue, but, you know, your president asks you to continue and you say, look, I'm going to try to balance my consideration of my health and service to my country. And I think that is what Dr. Rupnarine is doing. Dr. Rupnarine had tendered his resignation. However, it was withdrawn following a meeting with President David Granger. Earlier, the former education minister had told reporters that he was fit and ready to continue to serve the people of Guyana. However, as the time went by, his health began to deteriorate, which caused him to tender his resignation. We did not ask him to stay on. The president asked him to stay on. So your question is that if he doesn't perform because of ill health, whether we would be responsible, no, we didn't ask him to stay on. The WPA executive member is adamant that the minister is capable of executing his new functions. Whatever position Dr. Rupnarine assumes, we will be supporting and helping him to ensure that he performs to his optimum. We, in the past, did not do that when he was at the education ministry. This time around, we are going to do that. So it's not a question of monitoring. It's a question of helping and supporting our, um, our um, nominee, our minister, to do the best job that he can. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The Guyana Public Service Union says the minimum wage for public servants must be no lower than $131,000. According to the union, this will ensure persons able to afford their needs. The Guyana Public Service Union continues to demand a higher wage for public employees. This call continues despite there was a deadlock between the union and government on wage increase for public servants. With respect to that committee, the government put up a terms of reference. We examined it, we agreed with it. And both sides were to name three persons. We named over three persons. We submitted the names to the ministry, to the government team that is way back in July. On to now, we cannot meet to decide where we go with the um, allowances. The first vice president of the union, Martiner Levin, is expected to voice a number of concerns when the meeting with the Public Service Ministry on August 4 convenes. While a memorandum of understanding was signed between the government and the GPSU to discuss wages and other issues affecting public servants, the union is claiming several attempts to hold meetings were futile. We have done what we call a basket of necessities, which we have shared with you before. And we are looking at the minimum wage that a person can use to exist. And we are saying that minimum wage, we should achieve that minimum wage by 2016. And our proposals is in keeping with that. The committee, which comprises of three members each from the union and the government, is responsible for negotiating wages for public servants. In addition to this, they are tasked to examine and make recommendations on the issues of allowance offered by the GPSU, among other responsibilities. Sandy Ramutar. For MTV's News Update. The Jarjung Chamber of Commerce and Industry believes the one currency once introduced in the carbon will benefit Guyana by attracting investors. 
With discussions ongoing to have the Chinese yuan renminbi currency used in Guyana and the wider Caribbean, the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry says it is beneficial for the country since it will attract investors. President of GCCI Diodat Indar said a lot needs to be done before the yuan currency is introduced to the region since most foreign transactions are done in U.S. currency. The transactional benefits will be that, um, you know, it will, since we've been having issues with with U.S. currency, um, maybe back maybe two, three months ago, um, uh, if uh, you have a situation where businesses are invoiced in Guyana in the Chinese yuan, well then we'll have to find that in our local banking system to remit that money to Chinese suppliers. If they bill you in such a form, they have to bill you in yuan, and then you will be able to send them back that. So they mean there will have to be a currency um, a build up here. There will have to be some reserves here. And um, if uh, the situation pans out that you will have to um, pay in uh, Chinese yuan, well then it might be on a transactional level able to offset some of the demand for U.S. currency. GCCI's president said the introduction of the Chinese currency can reduce the cost of living. However, that depends on the fluctuation of the currency market, he added. Okay, from, from the Chamber's perspective, if, if, we, if the currency comes in and um, the difference between the transactional cost between uh, finding currency in the Chinese yuan as against the U.S. currency, um, and uh, your bills are, the cost of goods go down, your cost of purchasing going down, well, it will benefit Guyanese, but that will be market determined as every day those rates change. Every day they change um, as you go along. So from a standpoint, now you can't uh, you know, look into the future and say it will be beneficial or not. It depends on the strength of the currency or the weakness of the currency. Um, I would not worry too much about that though. Discussions are currently underway with the Caribbean Development Bank to have the currency introduced to the region. The prison officer who was killed on duty on July 9 during the prison in foreign on jailbreak was laid to rest on Thursday, July 25, as his colleagues paid their final respects. Details in this report. A large crowd gathered this morning at Lycan Funeral Home to get a final glimpse of Odinga Wickham. Wickham was killed during the July 9th prison break and fire at Cam Street. The prison officer was ambushed during the riot. He was rushed to the Georgetown Public Hospital for medical attention, but during the emergency surgery, Wickham succumbed to his injuries. The post-mortem examination report revealed that he sustained four gunshot wounds to his body. At the funeral home this morning, family members and his colleagues said farewell to Wickham. The 33-year-old leaves to mourn his four-year-old child, fiancé, mother and other relatives. Nikhil Chondo reporting for MTV News Update. The Guyana Chamber of Commerce and Industry is uncomfortable with the new tobacco bill regulations. It is against this backdrop that the Chamber is calling for further consultations before the bill is introduced in the National Assembly. The draft tobacco bill is expected to be laid in the National Assembly on July 27. However, the Georgian Chamber of Commerce and Industry is registering in strong opposition to the presentation of the bill in its current form. President of the Georgian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Diodat Indar, said, Despite the health complications that come with smoking, there needs to be accommodation for the commercial sector. Yes, they have a lot of things in there that they don't like. Like, they have to supply information and you trade information, how much customers you sell. If you don't do that, there's fines for that. Um, displaying and these kind of thing, you know, um, those are no longer, you know, you can't do those things anymore. Um, so, you know, you will find a, you know, it, 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 it could give rise to a lot of underhand selling of tobacco, you know, because if it's, it's, it's very stringent indeed, and it, it could give rise to those things. But I guess you might have to wait and see.
you know, you might have to wait and see. The GCCI president said despite there's need for more consultation, the chamber will just watch as the legislation is being discussed in parliament. But from both sides of the argument is that, you know, that this bill, this bill, you know, is, is one that I believe that if we had a little more con, um, consultation between the commercial side as well from the government side, a, a little less, you know, onerous bill could have been, you know, could have been a result of such consultation. But um, I guess it is what it is. It's already there. So we have to, you know, you have to say, you know, there's a saying that, you know, the proof of the pudding is in eating. We have to see how it fleshes out, how it's implemented. The bill was gazetted to be read in Parliament on June 15, but was postponed to July 27. The government had facilitated consultations on the bill. The government of Guyana is trying to ban public smoking. Yanis Abrams reporting for MTV's News Update. Meanwhile, on July 27, the bill was passed in the National Assembly. The Rights of a Child Commission is opposing the use of corporal punishment in education and institutions as well as homes. Instead of flogging a child, the Commission is calling for alternative measures to be employed. The Rights of the Child Commission over time has endorsed the abolition of corporal punishment in homes and schools. Speaking on the issue, Chief Executive Officer of the Commission, Amar Pandey, said such punishment interferes with a child's psyche. We are opposed to the usage of corporal punishment in all its forms. We believe that alternative measures or alternative uh, means measures of discipline could be um, contemplated and exercised that would be able to uh, discipline children in a non-violent way. Commissioner of the Rights of the Child Commission, Sandra Hooper, believes alternative measures should be used instead of administering corporal punishment. As such, the Commission requested that the Education Ministry include experts in the education system. A child may be seen doing a wrong act, but instead of correct, correcting that child, we just sit and look at him. And we could easily call the child to find out why he's doing a particular thing. And he will give an explanation, or he might not even have an explanation. And you can have a discussion to help him to understand what he has just done. I think this is what is lacking both in the homes and in the schools. Meantime, President David Granger, who shares a similar sentiment, believes non-physical means should be used within the home to uphold discipline. He is of the belief that non-physical forms of discipline will force the psychological health. Additionally, while in opposition in 2012, Amna Ali, during one of her parliamentary addresses, said corporal punishment has a legacy of the days of slavery. She also posited that it is an acceptable way to gain control over others. Sandy Ramutar for MTV News Update. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan says the administration is looking at broadening the tax base in order to obtain monies to finance various projects in 2018. The finance minister made the announcement while addressing the heads of budget agencies at the Marriott Hotel on Monday, July 24. Find out more in this report. You are well aware of demands by certain groups for removal of one tax or the other. You are well aware that as a result of our upper middle income classification, concessional resources are dwindling. So, we will have to exhort greater effort to widen the tax net through greater efficiency in the administration and collection of taxes. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan says expenditure pressures continue to mount. Minister Jordan cited that for 2018, the government will have to find funds to finance local government elections and to rebuild the country's prison system. He noted that even as the administration continues to support Gaisuko, the corporation is consuming billions of dollars. The minister admonished the heads of budget agencies to understand the reality which the country faces and to develop realistic and achievable budget goals. Be guided by the strategic plans and the sector's medium term objectives. Be guided by value for money and cost efficiency measures. Above all else, be guided by results. Your job means achieving a balance of all these. You must demonstrate a persistent and keen interest 
in managing in a timely manner. Know your sector, collect the data, know the data, and use it for your evidence-based submissions to the Ministry of Finance and within your own agencies. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. As the Commission of Inquiry into an alleged plot to assassinate President David Granger continues, the credibility of nightly news broadcaster Travis Chase was questioned. Find out more in this report. It's not against the advice of, of Mr. Peters. I'm just, well, it was not against the advice of Mr. Peters. It was not against the advice of Mr. Peters. I think what Mr. Peters um, tried to advise there too, that some yeah, of the content some of the content in that recording could not have been made public. Maybe more of this, but this would be this in the box. Probably you too, because your name is mentioned in the recording. In the recording? That's correct. Yes, well, my name can be mentioned anyway, it doesn't matter to me. Broadcaster Travis Chase gave a detailed statement to the commission when he took the stand. However, former Chief Justice Ian Chang, who is representing the Ghana Police Force, during cross-examination, pressed Chase to answer whether he believes the entire story told to him by the informer. Chase was further questioned by Chang about him having a grudge against the force. I just want to ask this question. Do you, did, 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 what, do you yourself ever charge by the police? Mr. Chang, what is the relevance? Mr. Chang, what is the relevance of that? Well, you see, he's saying that he himself have no animosity towards the police. Yeah. I'm showing you that he has reason to have that But you, 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 so you're suggesting what? If he was ever charged by the police, police in he had a material encounter. And, and that will show whether the answer is yes or not, that will show animosity. Well, if you have police encounter with the police and you were wrongly charged, I will have an answer time. Well, you talk more wrongly you now. <laughs> Chase was also questioned by attorney Christopher Ram, who is representing Imran Khan, the businessman, who is alleged to have wanted to loan $7 million to the informer to shoot the president during one of his outreaches or before the president moved from his Durban backlands residence. It's in the statement that I said repeated calls to Mr. Wendell Blanham went unanswered. And he, I believe, was the only person who would have been authorized to speak to the person in such a sensitive matter. So was it your was it your impression that the only attempt made by Mr. Gillard, and following up on the question you just as you just gave, that it was attempts to contact the crime chief, Mr. Blanham? No, 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 that's what I'm saying. Well, okay, please tell us what you said. I tried to contact. No, yes, I know. But first thing, I asked you, as an investigative journalist, whether you sought from Mr. Gillard, who was making this very serious, um, fantastic accusation, what where and when he made complaints against to the police concerning this alleged blood. It's on the disc. I can't recall this part. The broadcaster told the commission that immediately after interviewing the informer, he called Crime Chief Wendell Blanham to relate what was told to him. However, his calls went unanswered. That was when he called former head of the Presidential Guards, Brian Joseph, and provided him with a copy of the recording. The head of the Special Organized Crime Unit, Sidney James, was subsequently given a copy. Chase told the commission that he kept the recording while trying to ascertain its authenticity for several weeks. He came to me yes, like yes, any like other person. He can't put it in the public domain by himself. See, he comes to Mr. Travis Chase. Right. The TV man. Right. Reporter. The TV man willingly gave him assistance to do so. Mr. Chairman, the statement said, I interviewed Mr. Gillard. I held on to the interview for a while until confirmation was given that the police were investigating this matter. If it was the case that the police was not investigating the matter up until today, the interview would still be the nightly news. 
The commission will continue on Friday with Acting Commissioner of Police David Ramnarine to take the stand. Nikhil Chondo reporting for MTV News Update. A horrible farmer has been brutally chopped to death in his Wispadamora River home. His relatives claim to have seen a strange man in the village wheeling cutlasses prior to the man's death. A 51-year-old man has been found dead in his home, located at Whisper Demerara River, early Wednesday morning. According to Samantha Duki, the niece of Don Paul Duki, two men strangers to the village were seen traversing the very area where Duki lived and was last seen alive. Dan Paul Duki, also known as Polly, according to the relative, was discovered by his nephew lying motionless on his bedroom floor, bearing multiple stab and chop wounds about his head and body. The last the mother see was um, morning after my five daughter, she cooked for me. And he come and collect his food, he didn't eat like she. And then he got back to home. And the last see the two person, and both of them had... Um, I think cutlass or a knife, one of the two. Cutlass, yeah, both have cutlass in their hand. They're not from the village, but I'm, um, they go up there to work with a um, company. The man named Pandit, he got sand pit up there. Like he opened a farm, he planted she appears, so they, uh, that's like they're working. According to Duki, herself and relatives were informed by workers of the sand mine within the community that the two strangers were hired by the sand mine owner. However, upon the discovery of her uncle's body, the men disappeared. Well, um, yesterday morning, like around uh, about eight, eight, uh, like eight o'clock, probably the time, um, he go up to pick up coal, and when he's coming down back, he said he check you out, and when he put, when he coming down the hill, he said he see you, he say the person look like he say so going closer to me. When he go in, he take a good look. He said, like, this man is shaking me. I um, party, party up there. And the man asked, he said, this is my party. So he got him back the wheel. And he asked me to tell him by that, come see this man here. That this is he. And then I discovered that the man did. Investigations are ongoing. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Crinlias. The Mahai Kamai Kone Bari Agricultural Development Authority is still to receive some $700 million from farmers in the area. The money outstanding is for land rental and drainage and irrigation works done by the MMA ADA. Following the passage of the annual budget 2017, drainage and irrigation charges as well as land rental in Region 5 have hiked. In some areas, the prices have doubled. The money is payable to the Mahai Kamai Kone Abari Agricultural Development Authority. Since the increase, the MMA ADA is still to receive over $700 million from farmers from DNI and land rental charges for the year so far. This is according to the general manager of the authority, Aubrey Charles. The way moving forward is to uh, send them notices. Again, try to encourage them to be having public meetings with them. And... Um, and then if that fails, then the board will de determine um, as to what next do we do. According to him, notices have been sent twice for the year to all farmers, urging them to pay with immediacy. Charles says feedback from the farmers is not forthcoming. That is why we are saying that you could come in and work with a payment plan. If a farmer owes $400,000, we know that it might be difficult for a person to come and pay $400,000 one time because of whatever reason. But they could come in and say, listen, look, I, I admit that I owe this $400,000, but look, as I make a 40, and over the next two years, we get, I can try to see if I could pay off. The increases to DNI and land rental charges as overtime saw farmers protesting in disagreement. The opposition party has even tabled a motion to halt the increase of the drainage and irrigation and land rental charges, but to no avail. That's a wrap for MTV News Updates Weekend Review. The newscast can be viewed online on our MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Join us Monday, July 30 for another edition of MTV News Update. On behalf of our news team, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thank you for watching.